Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Can I see Hello. some hands? Geeky hands? Can I go through? Hello. Yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about the comic book industry, our experiences in the comic book industry, and how comics broke our hearts. I always say that uh, comic books will break your heart. Comics broke our hearts. You keep hearts. saying that. I just, you know... It's true though. It's true. We're gonna we're gonna talk about. That's for you more than me. But anyway. yeah. Um. So we last night, late last night, we didn't think we we're gonna launch it. We actually launched a, a second chance offer for hardcovers of our web comic Shadowbinders. It was on uh, Webtoon. It was on Keen Spot. It was on its own domain back in the day. Believe it or not, it was actually pretty popular. Yes. And so if you go out to Indiegogo, you can check it. We've already had some people back in. Yeah, we didn't really announce it much no, yet. No, we didn't kind of like, announce anything. You know us. We just drop it and say, hey, here you go. Yeah, a lot of people do these big like lead-ups or whatever. But in this case, it's it's older material. It's just that uh, this is a, a second chance to to get that material. And uh, we'll talk more about that. But um, you know, we're going to kind of talk, frankly, I think, about our experience in the comic book industry now here's here's what you'd be backing first these are hardcovers all right hold on hold on hold on all right there you go there you go so this is uh shadow binders volume one shadow binders volume two uh this has the first six chapters of the uh, webcomic this has uh seven through seven through ten and there are two more chapters that were posted online, and we're currently working on new material. For book three. For book three. So three is in production now. Yeah, so these are these are done. They're um, thick. They're 160 pages. Uh, we got some art on them. We've got Isbin numbers. We're all official. Look at that. We've got the Clownfish comics. So this is technically the very first Clownfish comic imprint. Technically the very first Clownfish comic. And I'm going to show, I'm going to pull up some, some artwork here. Now, this was a webcomic. Yeah, let's this. <laughs> okay, so this was from many, many years ago. This started in 2010. Yes. Okay, so we're talking like 11 years ago, going 11 years ago. Um, also, it was on a time crunch, so it wasn't like the work. If you've seen web comics, we actually put a lot more into it than some, we of, the, did. some of the we things did. now that you see that's just headshots and talking. Yeah. But, it, it you know, sometimes the, the art changes. I'm just going to preamble that. Yeah. Like, I don't want to give too much because. Well, we're not, I'm not going to give too much. I'm going to skip around. Well, let's okay. go back to the beginning here and see how, like, Start at the very beginning. Start at the very beginning. That's a very good place to start. Yeah, I tried it first. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do this fully painted thing, and then I realized like it it it's not feasible. So then by the time we got to like the end of the book, um, I was going more. I prefer the end of the book stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, because it was story wise, it was much better. Um, here we got like a cow. We've got oh look, uh, we've got a. Gothy girl kicking the crap out of this guy. Um, so yeah, by the end of the book, we went more, um, we went more uh, cell shaded, and then that was kind of a look that don't ruin the whole book. I'm not. They don't even know who these people are. It was out there for years. So I'm just gonna pull random. Basically, if you like me and, and Neon, you'll like the book because basically this is me and Neon as comic characters. Uh, since it was our own thing, we weren't beholden to, you know, and, you know, keeping the legacy of characters that were established. Right. We could make it based on, you know, our personalities. So it is very much our personalities. It is. Um, now, this, by the time we got to the end of Chapter 10, hold on here, this was actually more consistent with what the art was like later. You know, I found a, I found a happy medium. I think I did, I did the kind of the animated look, but I was shading it a little bit better than it was in the previous chapters. Plus, I was more comfortable drawing characters. Stop giving them. They don't know yet. You gotta buy the book if you but wanna then, know who's they start reading it, they'll be like, oh, now I know what that means. And then I'll be like, I told you, I told you, and you didn't listen to me, and I don't wanna hear it. If you want a synopsis, basically, of what the story is about, you can go out to the Indiegogo page. There's a teaser. Come on, our pitch. It was a girl from our world inherits a magic ring and is transported to a magical steampunk world. Of Bellatier, there she meets a arrogant mage and his crew, who are actually nice, aboard the you know, the, the crew aboard the True North airship, and hilarity and adventure ensue. Something, you know, something like something that. Something I haven't like done that. the pitch for quite a while. Yeah, we used to do cons. Um, now here's they the used thing: to bring us in and talk about how to do web comics and where to put them, and yeah, web comics and where to put them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and we do the same thing now. That uh, should in be a different way. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this and have our adventures because Shadowbinders for us wound up being kind of an eye-opening experience into the the publishing scene the comic book scene now uh disclaimer we did work on comics before uh, never worked in comics full-time 
But I did a lot of, uh, and you were helping me a lot, quite a bit. Yes, I did. With, I didn't get the credit, though. Oh, you did get credit you later. I, mean, I fought for credit. They gave the credit. credit of one of the things I worked on, the dozens I did. I know. So we did a lot of work on licensed comics, particularly Disney books. Um, a lot of Eisner-nominated books and yeah, writers for you. I colored this. This was actually one of my last gigs uh, working on Disney comics. This is for the Don Rosa. I did a bunch of Don Rosa colors and re-inks which was awesome because I'm a huge fan. So it was kind of a nice way, I guess, to sunset my, Plus, my Disney really comics. Plus, you picky about who got the rink and stuff, and they let you do it. They did, uh, which I'm still shocked. But, yeah, I colored this cover. Um, I did a bunch of stuff in the books, too. Uh, these are actually beautiful books. If you get a chance, if you're a DuckTales fan, like here, I, I redid these. Um, my, my full fake name, my full fake name is Neon Transit. That's right. And that's full fake my full fake name. So uh, I did a lot of these. I did these. Uh, did a lot of colors. I did. I know I did some covers for IDW, IDW which is so weird. Because I, I was joking about the other day. I said, you know, they get these retailer incentives, and I had fistfuls of these one in twenty five retailer incentives. Um, so yeah, we did a lot of Disney comics, and we did a lot of licensed books, and I did some did some you know work here and there on other smaller for smaller publishers. Never worked for Marvel and DC. I have Marvel and DC stories. Though, but you know, we couldn't afford to do comics full time because the money is not there. No, uh, and we were a successful web comic, and we couldn't do it full time. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about because we were actually one of the few. I mean, you hear about web comics, and there's not much because you're basically giving your comic away for free. But we actually found a way to make it work. We, you know, we had uh, ad revenue coming in. We were doing other stuff in addition to the webcomic that was kind of related to it. We did a lot of conventions, a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. um, so when we say that we know how devastating it is to artists to not be able to do conventions, we're, we're totally on the level. Yeah, you know, we did it. Um, well, how this thing started, first of all, let's go back to the beginning, was but way back before I even met you, mm -hmm. you had an idea for something called Shadow Miners. Yes. And I wish we didn't pull it up. I wish we I could pull it up. The, it. I, you do have some of the original concept art if you go out to your uh, DeviantArt. Yeah, it's out there somewhere. Um, so he had this idea, and it was completely different. Uh, the only thing that I think that made the same was a couple characters in the airship. Later on, I had an idea for a story, and I thought, well, I can use some of the elements you had, which mm -hmm. apparently pissed you off, and no one ever bothered telling me. It didn't piss me off. It I did just, piss you off. It didn't piss me off the whole way. I was I was very protective of my ideas. I didn't it was know why like, you were being such a butt about it until later in an interview someplace else. You 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 announced, yeah, I was mad, and I was like, well, that's news to me. I'm not mad now. It worked out for the best. My my version was really damn right it did. My version was really mopey and depressing, but we did keep we did keep a lot of the characters from that version. We just them. repurposed them. You kept some of the um, characters. Some of the characters the became airship. other characters, like Andrew became a different Andrew, and right, yeah, kept some was, of the names. Yeah, um, but you know, so there's some elements of the original story and a lot of the stuff that I put in. So. Yeah, I mean, it does it does happen. Me I mean, or me. Yeah, Ren and Mia were you. Uh, the original protagonist was actually the kid, the sidekick kid in the comic. But he was a teenager, and Winston was in it originally. Yeah, Winston was always an original. Sid was in it. He was Sid's a, always been original. Yeah. And I kept, I, I wove them into the story. Yeah. And we kept the name Shadowbinders and the True North, which was the airship. So there was lots, lots of stuff. Kind of like Star Wars, how it was very, very different George Lucas's first draft. And my version wouldn't. I mean, honestly, it wouldn't have gone, and it was very kind of mopey and depressing. Like you are. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Pretty much. You're darker than I am. I'm more like, woohoo. But, um, no, I used to joke it was like the old Reese's Cup commercials. It's like, I got my chocolate and your peanut butter, and you got your peanut butter and my chocolate. So I've I've gotten my peanut butter and your chocolate a few times. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. Now we have little bite-sized Reese's Cups running around. <laughs> we do. We've got the, uh, the Hershey Kisses. Anyway. Um, um, anyway, um, it worked out for the best. Uh, Shadowbiters, at its peak, was doing over a million views yeah, a month. Yeah, I have that, actually. Um, this is actually our pitch book. This okay. is this is the first time I think I've ever shown this. Okay, I guess we need to explain of, this too. So yeah. after we did really well with the webcomic, um, we were, uh, companies are actually bringing us in, including Bark Wade's company, that they wanted to do webcomics and they wanted to make it work. So they are bringing us in as, as advisors, you know, kind of. Yeah, because we actually figured out how to kind of sort of make money. Right. right? So like, I know that, you know, Tokyo Pop brought us in on mm -hmm. their one project, you know, Mark Wade was talking to us about another, I guess there were spots for different web comics. And there was only one person, one, one web comic that wasn't by a, a, a quote unquote pro. And that was ours. Um, so this, 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 we, we had a backstory. This. So we decided we were going to try to get a publishing deal. 
and you need an agent for a publishing deal. So you talk to uh, Rita Tugelmeyer's agent first. Yeah, which... So okay, let's 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 talk about this because this is a, people ask us questions about breaking in the comics and how to get in the comics and how to make money in comics and how to get publishing to all this stuff. We got to the top of the mountain and it wasn't what we thought it was. No, so don't um, listen to any of that old old information because it's old information. It is old information. Yeah, we actually had. Uh, I mean, this isn't the brag, but we kind of had our pick of agents. Uh, well, we talked to her first. Yeah. And she was she she does this thing where she wants to make sure you know your place first and that she's the boss of you and that she kind of just, you know, talks down to you for two hours. Yeah, I had I had that conversation to her. I've talked to her like three times. Yeah. And she and always, then she was pissed because she said she wasn't interested with another agent, and then she was mad that we didn't pick her. Yes. Um, true story. I don't understand what happened. And then we like, talked what? to the agent we ended up with. I'm not going to name names, but no, he may or may that. not be the same agent that somebody who ruined a you know popular IP that I love from the '80s had as an agent. And yes. um, that's how we know so much about said person. Um, we had that person as an agent, and they're very interested in the book. And then we got there, and by the time we got there, it, that's when the market shifted. It yeah. used to be based on merit. We were constantly being asked to prove numbers. Constantly being asked to prove audience up until that point. And then that's when it shifted to it was more about who you were and your and how you identified than it was about, you know, how good you were if you had an audience or not. So then people that didn't have audiences because they had the right adjectives were suddenly getting deals. That is what okay, that is what really frustrated because we were so hard we we played by the rules we did everything we we're supposed to do we had the numbers we had data i mean i'm a numbers guy i come from a marketing yeah, background I have it right, right here. um so even our pitch book uh this was we were actually going to pitch what we're pitching to publishers was at this point a a reboot we were gonna because you know it was a web comic so we we're trying to make it more diverse yeah we were trying some different things we we're like we could go if we could so go back and change things for what all would the we talk change? that we don't care about diversity we were trying to change it to make it more diverse. But you can see here, um, this is from 2014, obviously. Yeah. But you can see the numbers. Uh, news outlets used to cover us. Yeah. Uh, they liked us, but now they don't. Um, but yeah, we had the numbers. So we had the numbers. We had uh, numbers. We had provable revenue from it. We had interest. Uh, we had a pedigree. Again, you know, worked on Disney books. I can, I can say... Almost exclusively, I've worked on Eisner-nominated material. We had contacts in the industry. We had publishing people ready to go we still do. to bat for us. And we got there. And at first, like you said, there was all kinds of interest. They're like, yeah, this is great. But then there was a switch that was flipped. And it was about 2014, uh, where all of a sudden, you know, then we couldn't get the agent to call us back. And look, we weren't talking about politics, any of that stuff dude back then. Dude stalled us out for months. Dude really stalled us out. And then we found out that... This is the same dude that told me I wasn't feminist enough. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, the guy told me. Yeah, yeah. same guy. Um, then we found out what happened was that there were people that, frankly, weren't as qualified, hadn't paid their dues that were jumping line. Well, even before we got the agent, um, we went clear to a meeting at first second for our other project, which is a prequel to Shadow Yeah, they Rose, took a meeting about Yeah, it was interesting. Called Crimson Around the True North. And it's a self-contained book. And um, Scholastic was kind of interested in it too. Right. Yeah. And we actually pitched that one first. And we actually got clear to a meeting in first second within a matter of two weeks. It wasn't like we had to go through an agent. So the whole idea of having yeah, they, they an took, agent. Yeah, they took it to, to clarify because somebody would be like, all right, work at first second. No, they took a meeting about us because they have a they have a, a pitch meeting. Right, where they right. go over the, the, the short list it of the book. It made it the yeah. short list yeah. in the meeting form within a couple of weeks of us sending it to one of the uh, one of the editors, um, and it didn't get picked up. But there's you know I have, there's reasons I'm not gonna that had nothing to do with identity, but it had to do with in, internal politics and other people that shouldn't have had book deals when because it was a conflict of interest having a book deal, but. Um, it went clear to a meeting within like less than two weeks. We had I, heard of. Yeah, I had uh, I had uh, Scholastic, the editor of Scholastic, and that was without the agent actually got back to me within like two or three days. Yeah, so actually, we were, we, we get and, agents to get back to us, and we get yeah. publishers get back to us, which is not the norm. So we knew we had something, but we got in too late because yeah. at that point it was shifting into to, from let's make money to let's just promote certain people and certain things, and then if we make money, great. If we don't. Oh well, we'll just blame it on toxic people. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's what happened. This is still coming. This I'm so proud of this. This is what we. Yeah. This this one. I'm so proud of this one. This really broke our hearts. Like this it one was, did break my heart. It, we got so far. I mean, the, the entire the wall in our bedroom had sticky notes. Yes, we had on the we whole had the thing. whole story on on um, post its all across the room. 
Um, it's uh, th we're still gonna do this one because this is my my favorite thing we've done. We're gonna have to hire an artist though. Right. Um, we're gonna all over the place. We're like, what the hell? So yeah. anyway, my point is, you can get to the top of the mountain. It doesn't mean that there's more mountain. And so nowadays, you don't have to even go up the mountain because we were under the impression that you had to do a certain thing. You had to have an audience, and you had to get an agent. You had to do all this stuff to make money, get a publishing deal. You don't now. You don't. Yeah. Um. And that's that's really where I want to go with it. But yeah. So we we play by the rules. We got burnt. Um, myself and people were like, well, what happened to Shadowbinders as as a webcomic? And I'm, I'm, well, that was you, not me. That was me. And I'll, I'll tell you what, because, again, working a day job, uh, it got drawn in and around that day job. I can't, I'd come home from work. I'd barely see my family. And then I would go draw until 2 o'clock in the morning. And I noticed a change even in the webcomic audience that they got more demanding. They did. They started getting nitpickier about stuff. They started getting more demanding. And what we started to see before it was like, hey, this is great. Thanks for you know making a comic and putting it out there and all that. What we started to see was uh, a lot of people just demanding, where's my free comic? You know, you didn't update. You're lazy. I'm like, bitch, please. I worked a 50-hour week. Oh yeah, week. and each of these pages sometimes took like twelve hours. Yeah, because we were doing, you know, again, this is this is a lot more complicated than a typical than what you see on webtoons or whatever, yeah. where it's just a lot of yeah. Like, I mean, you look know, at this. Like I don't even know how many hours or whatever. Or and I, but ironically, though, webtoons we had the best audience when we had it on webtoons. Uh, we had the best I, audience. I will, I will um, say that. Yeah, they were very kind. Um, they were invested, and, but they were they were very positive and very. I I honestly will say. It. I mean, there's a lot of things about webtoons I don't like, but I will say the audience at webtoons was phenomenal. Yeah, they were. Webtoons people were a lot nicer. The problem is we couldn't monetize it. And what happened was when you're you're a married couple, uh, you got to make money. Everything you do, you got to make money. And it got to a point where it was just like the webcomic business model doesn't work. Now, Webtoons does pay people uh, to come in. We were, we were paid. We were some of the, we, we actually got the Patreon payment. Yeah, we got the Patreon payments. They never, they never, I try to get a hold of, and this is, this this irritates me too. I try to get a hold of a human at Webtoon and be like, we will create exclusive content for you if you put us on the damn payroll because I know they do it. They were doing, we were on that payroll. Yeah, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't never get, I'm like, look, we got the numbers. We can bring the boom. This is a romance, got romance elements in it. They'd totally eat Which it they love. There. We they actually, do. one thing we did do guys, um, well, finish your story first. And I'll no, and I could never get a human. The only time I've ever gotten a human to get back to us on, on Webtoon is when we were quasi, quasi, not even full on, quasi critical of Webtoon. I had somebody write us on Facebook, like right away. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell? You know, mm -hmm. um, but like, How uh, dare you? yeah, so it's kind of like, yeah, whatever. But even then, it's not a lot of money. It really isn't. But um, I think I lost my train of thought now. I was going to say. Um, You'll find it. I'll find it eventually. Keep going. Um, I won't remember what it was. I was going to say something and then I then we got No, you said about uh, Webtoons, uh, DIY being the future. No, I don't remember. Let's keep going. Okay, we're, we're not going to end this that would have happened, so. Sorry. I mean, we get both of us on a lot of times. We... <laughs> Ooh, shiny. Pretty much. Um. So, yeah. So, we, we, we did. We got to the top. This is everything. Like, we got to a place where we had everything that these web comics people, indie comics people wanted. We had um, not only- This isn't bragging. This is just no. what happened. It doesn't matter if you have all that. It doesn't matter. Comics can still break your heart. It can still not work out the way you expect it to. So we had this thing going on. Well, then, meanwhile, we were kind of playing around with YouTube. We actually wound up in Maker Studios because of Disney connections. Right. Uh, we wound up in Maker Studios. They were having a, a like a, a pitch contest. It was in Variety, all that. Yeah, we had all three of our pitches picked up. All, you're allowed up to three. Yes. And we had all three pitches. Yes, we had three pitches. They all got picked up. Now, how we parted ways with our agent, I'll tell you. What happened was, agent who sat on our stuff. He kept stalling us out. He would not pitch our stuff. I'm like, dude, what's up? And we went from having like regular phone calls to the dude not returning my phone calls. He wouldn't even follow us on Twitter. So people no. knew he followed us. Yeah, I was like, okay, something's... We weren't even saying anything bad about comics at that point. No, that we was weren't. before you questioned Years Marvel. before. Years before that. So we uh, got in with um, Maker Studios. We pitched. We got all three options. We didn't wait um, for him. We just did it ourselves. And he got pissed. He was mad. He got pissed because he's like... Why did basically why did you do an end run? And I think I'm basically, I think we well, have someone to, had to do the job, yeah. Somebody you had to do the you fucking job, but you won't do anything, yeah. He didn't, and that's okay. This is the truth, too. And I want to talk about that. Everybody's like, go get an agent, agents anymore are lazy, they want you to have a deal before you have to do the work. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, the only reason he picked this up 
was because we already had we had the first second in a meeting like that. Yeah, that's the only reason. Dark Horse was interested at one easy. point too. Yeah, Dark Horse was interested. Uh, he had connections at Dark Horse. Um, then he used your connections to get his people. Uh, Disney connections. He used some of his Disney connections to get some of his people deals using connections we had because he was talking to them about stuff for us, and then he then he he didn't do stuff for us, and then used the connections to get his his other people deals. So what happened was we basically, I mean, it wasn't like we, you know, came, things came to a head because we're like, look, we got people that are willing to pay us to option this and other stories like right now. And I did not tell him who it was freaking Disney. And he got mad and was like, well, I think we should, you know, if you got other people, I think we should just part ways. I'm like, fine, fine. We'll do it. We did. And Disney, you know, threw money at us and, and they optioned it. Now they sat on. All this stuff for a couple of years. Yeah, and there was a couple other projects too that are. Yeah, they're not even. They're on the list of things we want to do with uh, with uh, the Clownfish Comics because mm -hmm. uh, they're worth doing, and I think they'd appeal to the audience. Yeah, they need reworked a little bit, but the basic concept. But they're all things we're about to hire people to do yeah. because we can't do everything. We're only two people. Yeah, I know. We try to do everything. Uh, so that's yeah. So then Disney, after about two years, the the it was for an animated series, it was Shadowbinders, and then two other. Two other series, which, you know, we just had basic pitches for. We didn't have a whole. And um, they sat on this stuff. So we couldn't really do anything for a couple of years. And then eventually they released it when Maker went belly up. You I think know? it was Crimson Red. It was, um, it, was, it might have been Crimson Red. It was Red, Crimson yeah. Red. And then it was a couple other things. Yeah. But, but it's still in the same, like, We wouldn't get it ourselves thing. because, you yeah. know, we always do things for ourselves. We don't wait around because if you wait around on other people, you're going to be waiting in line. And the one thing I learned from Neon is don't wait in line. <laughs> just, you know, go to the front of the line. Don't wait in line. Yeah, you know, here's the thing. The the, the game is rigged. If you try to play... Especially by, now. Much more especially so now. now. Much more so now than it ever was. When we came into this, it wasn't. It was more fair. It was you had to prove it. If you get cream rose to the crop and or to the top, you know what I mean? Cream. It doesn't that we're creamy. You know what I mean? The stuff that was good... It was, we're creamy and delicious. <laughs> marketable um you know always goes you know to the top whether it be ours or other people's there's a lot of people who had much more successful comics than we did so this is not it sounds arrogant and i'm not meaning to be but you had to do the work and put it in and prove it so you got to a place where you proved it and then you 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 moved on to the next step well that's how it was and then the steps were gone and then it yeah. became something completely different and it was more about what we're seeing now it was the beginning of this agenda push over content is what yeah. happened and we got caught up in that we saw it happen in real time we saw people that you know because you wonder like you look at comics now and you're like you know what's so-and-so doing what's so-and-so because they were like a huge deal and then you realize that like at marvel and dc they haven't gotten any work in years and it's like what happened it's like well they basically they weren't the right kind of person anymore right. they weren't trendy anymore and pu mainstream publishing in hollywood especially they chase trends. They they literally have meetings every year or every, you know, and they're like, well, this season, this kind of book is going to be in by this kind of person. And comics sort of caught that. It used to be about, again, what sold. It didn't matter what kind of person you were, what sells. And now it's about what kind of person right. are you. Right, and there's a reason why Japan is kicking the United States' ass. Yes. Yes. Because in Japan, if you don't perform, you could be the best. It could be an amazing book, but if it doesn't sell, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know? That's the way it is. And that's what I meant when I said, like, you know, cream rises to the top. It's just like the ones that are marketable will present themselves. The ones that aren't won't do as well. And that's what that's what happened. You had to prove you were marketable first for them to even look at you. And yeah. now you don't even have to prove that. You just have to prove that you identify a certain way or that you, you know, are a certain affiliation or whatever um, to get deals. And then when the money doesn't follow because it, people don't want to buy it, they blame it on the customers. Yeah. And it's a disgusting trend. Uh, the future, I mean, if it couldn't be made any clearer, and, and I want to talk about it because there, there is hope. You know, DIY is hope because I, I honestly think at this point, the only new stuff we're going to get is people making their own stuff, starting their own independent studios. Which is uh, what we did. Yeah. It's like nobody else. Clownfish Comics. Bitches. There it is. <laughs> so it's like we started our own. These are the very first books in the imprint. Yeah. So... Um, and we're gonna we're gonna continue. I mean, warts and all, we're gonna continue with the story. It's probably gonna be print first. I don't think we can realistically just give the comic away. No, we it tried doesn't that. Work. It, it does was not a business work. model that worked at the time because ad revenue was good. But what happened was was people were abusing the ad revenue, yeah. and because of that, uh, blogs and things like that would get to keep the ad revenue, but web comics didn't. Right. And um, it wasn't money. 
Yeah, web comics were frankly they were cheating the the ad system, and a lot of like Google wouldn't even put ads on sites anymore because people were clicking. Penny Arcade admitted to it in the documentary right. that so they were clicking it was their never own ads. Sustainable. Yeah. No. Um, and and when we got into web, web comics, there was nowhere near the competition. No. And there were other avenues that you could promote. Um, Pro, uh, what was it, Project Wonderful? Yeah, and we, that got blown yeah, up. Yeah, that well, we we were kind of involved in that one too. But um, there there was all these ways you could promote things, and there was things that you could do that you don't have now. And then where there wasn't much competition, it's there's so much competition now. Now this is not to dissuade you. I'm no. saying if you want to put something out there, definitely put it out there. Um, you know, temper your expectations, but you're gonna have to think outside the box to get people to see it. Yeah. Um, that's just the way it is. But back then we didn't have the competition we have now. Right. Um, and it is is getting crowded. But we're, we have so many. There used to be a stigma with crowdfunding. I remember they we did. we you actually comics too. Yeah. Our first crowdfunder for the, the very first book, it, you know, it was like 2011, 2012. And back then it was like, basically, you're not good enough to get a publisher to pick up your stuff. So you have to go beg for money. And some publishers, ironically enough, uh, Fanagraphics, who, you know, I have a lot of respect for the books that they put out, but I remember them having this this article out uh, trying to discourage people from crowdfunding because they said it was e-begging. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't a good look that you should go through a traditional publisher and not beg. Um, and then like a year later, they were kind of on the rocks financially and they had to do a crowdfunder just to stay in business. Well, then you have like the media, you know, vilifying, you know, companies like Boom and stuff doing crowdfunding. Yeah. Um, but... I can understand why they want to see much demand there is for it. And again, like everybody says it works against the people on the platform. I don't agree no. because I think there's people coming in that would not normally have come to, you know, the platform. Um, and then while they're there, might be like, well, this is cool. What else is here? And they might, people might get back. They would not normally have gotten back. Mm -hmm. And just because there's all this money going to that crowdfunding campaign doesn't mean they'd ever were given you money in the first place because they were there for that crowdfunding campaign. Yeah. It doesn't mean that's taken away from you. If anything, it's probably giving you more opportunity, not less. But that's just my two cents. Yeah. But uh, so there's no shame in it. We've got, you know, I, I, I'm excited because especially within the last couple of years, and we see this change in Hollywood, and I think I think the pandemic has sped this up. That there is no shame in crowdfunding anymore. Um, it, it's not, you're not a lesser creator because you had to go you know, direct to consumer when when big publishers are going to direct, direct to consumer. How Disney just restructured their whole damn business model to go direct to consumer? Yeah. So, I mean, and Disney's even doing it. So what's that tell you? I mean, don't let people tell you you need to go through these channels anymore. That might have been the case. But by the time we got there, it all changed. Yeah, and, and that's it. And so you've got Save people, yourself some trouble. Right. You've got Todd McFarlane, Don Bluth, uh, you know, doing it themselves. Um, you should try to get them on the show. I would love to get them on the show and talk Anybody about knows them. Like, yeah, I would love uh, either Don Bluth or Todd McFarlane. Uh, that'd be awesome. Has Been Hotel. Again, you know, they did their own animated pilot on YouTube and that got picked up. Yes. You know, so you, I, I think anymore, the best advice I can give to anybody, and this it, it shows how much things have changed, is you have to be willing to do it yourself. Um, I, I would say do it yourself. And if a publisher wants to get involved at some point and it's a good business deal for you and they can help you with distribution. Oh, always have lawyers check contracts. Yeah, always have lawyers check contracts. But um, then do it. But, you know, if you're waiting on a publisher to get your stuff out, it, you're going to be waiting a long time, especially if it's something new. And especially, especially these publishers, they're going to do what's best deal for themselves, too. Yeah. You have to understand that the, the advances are not always the greatest. Plus, you have to give your agent a cut. Oh Plus, God, you yeah. they break the payments up every year, so you might only be making like a tiny bit of a year for like multiple years. And then they turn around and might give you only a dollar a book or whatever they're going to give you for sales. And they're keeping the lion's share of it. And now they've set it up, too, that they keep all rights for, like, merchandising. Theme parks. And theme parks yeah. and stuff because of what happened with uh, Harry Potter. And, mm -hmm. and they, lost, they think they lost a bunch of money there. They're out to make themselves the most money as possible. Where if you do it yourself or you, 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 you come into it with, a, you know, you have the leverage because they're coming to you, then you can negotiate a better deal for yourself um, than you would have if you had been chasing them. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's just everything has has changed. This is the way to go. This is the way we're going to have to do things, from, especially if you want new stuff. You cannot depend on these corporations to give you new stuff because they don't want to take a risk. You know, mm -hmm. they don't want to take a risk. So what they'll do is they'll sit back, they'll watch what you do on your own, and then if they think they can make a money at it, they'll jump into it. Right, and we're not we're not getting new things, obviously, in Hollywood anymore. No. It's all, we're rebooting this. How they're making, they're taking, turning board games in them TV shows and movies. Monopoly and stuff getting turned into TV shows and movies now. 
Uh, it's weird what they're picking, too, because I, I kept joking that there were so many cartoonists that were dying to get a book deal. That was like the Holy Grail is get the book deal. And there are YouTubers who don't I even have... That earlier, yeah. They don't have any interest in comics. None whatsoever. They're game YouTubers or whatever. Yeah, like Minecraft YouTubers literally getting graphic novel deals, jumping to the head of the line now because... All these companies are looking at is like, oh, their numbers are really good. Uh, we could probably sell some books, but they did all the work already. Right, but they didn't go. They went to people who had numbers that right. weren't that weren't the people that were trying to pitch the books. Right. right. So you know that's just the way, it is what it is. So the best way to 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 win, I guess, is to not play their game. Yeah. And to, to make your own game. So that's what we did with uh, these books, and that's why we started the the Clownfish Comics. Um, here it is. This is. These are the first books that are going to be in Clownfish Comics. More will be coming. We might be hiring people for other projects in the near future. Yeah. Depending um, how well everything else does. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and now the kind of books I think we want to publish, uh, just to be clear, like we're not interested in superhero stuff. No. Um, our, our stuff I think is going to be more, but we don't want the mopey Tumblr autobiographies either. No, we have a riff. We want to riff on Power Rangers. We have one that was like, I, I, that one, I don't even want to describe the one with the train. I would say the best, the best description I have for the, the, the one, one of the other pitches was uh, Wacky Races meets Nintendo. I guess it, it, it's it, very, it, it's it was very, very cool. It's very cool. And, and that one's going to be hard to find an artist for because there's a very that one we're specific, a artist for sure, specific look I'm looking for. I want like 1980s, 1990s anime. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, we're definitely going to be, hopefully down the road, we might even be doing something with, to, to, to do a funding for Clownfish Comics so we can bring some new material, hire some people to do it. Uh, to work with us to do it because we can't we cannot do everything ourselves. No. Right now we run the YouTube channel. Um, we have the I have the Disney blog. We have another blog that's Drez that we're starting to try we're and trying to get people for that. Start too, yeah. bringing people in for that. Um, now we have Clownfish Comics. Um, eventually you want to try to get some IP, uh, uh, some uh, you know licensing stuff to do more comic stuff that's not you know that's licensed. Yeah, I would love. I mean, this is just me personal. I would love to grab some I, I guess snatch some old licenses and out of the them. fire. Save them. Because we actually would try to do right we'd hire the right people, try to do right by these licenses, especially if it's a classic IP with an existing fan base, be like, let's give the fans something they they, they actually want. want. They want. Let's not get the rainbow bright license and then turn around and reboot it in a completely different that's dumb. But that's getting all ahead of ourselves. Right yeah, now we're, we're just doing ahead. this for now to start. Yep. And then small, we're gonna we're gonna steps. start with these, and then I know there'll be a book three coming, um, probably late this year, early next year, um, or next year sometime. There's a book three coming of this. I know there's a couple other projects we can get artists on. We'd like to get started. Crimson Run, um, the one over here with the kids. Uh, it is like it's definitely Goonies on an airship. Yeah. Um, well, that was written to be. It was a self-contained graphic self novel, book. but was also kind of a backdoor movie. Pitch too. Yeah, like, it's written this like could a movie. Be so a movie. there's this one. Um, we have at least two other uh, series that we we know of that. that and again, if people that grew up like in the 80s and 90s, the yeah. things you'd probably like. Um, if you like the cartoon shows, the pop culture stuff, you'll mm -hmm. like these. So anyway, we were really long winded. You said we'll make a quick 20 minute video. How well, long? How, how long has this been? There's a lot, a lot of ground to cover. There's a lot of ground to cover. So this is this is uh, it's been about half an hour. Um, so this, hopefully we answered some questions for you guys. Uh, check it out on Indiegogo. Again, we didn't do a lot of fan therapy. No, we, we just didn't. Dropped so we, it. we dropped um, it and we did the video after. We did it bass backwards. Like we do everything apparently. <laughs> yeah, we're just like, let's backwards. let's throw up because we have a couple hundred of these books. Let's let's throw up a, a listing for those. And then if we there's demand, more. we'll get more. We can um, get more. Uh, it's a US, uh, US printer. So we can print get more it in the better. USA. Yeah, we tried. Um, yeah, we keep it in the USA. Yes. We can get uh, more books within like three weeks if we need them. So yeah, and people are going to wonder. They're like, why? Because you were working with print ninja and they were overseas and i'm like well um i have nothing bad to say about print ninja but covid definitely changed yeah. <laughs> definitely changed things it's easier to have a u.s printer at this point because we don't know what's going to happen funny you story know? if you didn't know shadow binders was the very first book that print ninja printed yes it was the as, first uh, volume was yes novel. it was the very first i had a very lengthy conversation with them uh for the and soft adam cover and eve of, of, of their their graphic novel printing yeah um yeah and they kind of they didn't even know how to do it. You had to walk them through all the. the I did. The, this was like 2011, 2012. Yeah, you I'm had like, to walk them through how what to ask for, what the measurements yeah. were, all that stuff. So they custom did it for us, and then it did so well that that's basically what they. Print that's now what they start. Yeah, they do yeah. comics now. They they you're welcome, Print Ninja. <laughs> 
But um, yeah, I have nothing bad to say about him, but it just it didn't work for us because of you know logistics with you know it was like they stopped. I think a lot of the overseas publishers just stopped um, sending stuff at all. So. so there you go. All right, guys. So check it out on Indiegogo. I'm going to put a link in the description. Uh, put it in the comments section, and um, yeah, let's do this and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. See you later. Bye.